Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being on with us this afternoon. Uh, we are very excited uh, to uh, start off Women's History Month in New Mexico today uh, by featuring some amazing women um, in the public sector here in New Mexico. Uh, so we're very, very excited to introduce all of them to you today. Uh, joining myself is my colleague, Christina Gothier, and she is our public relations coordinator extraordinaire out of our Albuquerque office. Uh, and my name is Christina Perea, and I am the Outreach Bureau Chief for PARA. So just some housekeeping items for everyone. We are recording this seminar. Uh, so if any of your colleagues couldn't make it today, we are gonna be uh, recording this, se this seminar and posting it to our website uh, within the next couple of days. Uh, so even if you wanted to go back and rewind and get some good information from our speakers today, uh, we definitely welcome you to join us that way. Um, today, uh, we're going to be introducing you here shortly to all of our co-hosts and our guests today. Uh, we are going to be muting everyone. So if you can please remember to just mute yourself throughout the seminar. Uh, we are all teleworking, I'm sure, and we all know the, the lovely world of virtual seminars. Uh, I know sometimes you can hear my, my dog barking in the background and my kiddos asking for food. Uh, so uh, with that being said, we're just gonna keep the seminar muted today. Um, if you have any questions for any of our guests, we are gonna allow some time um, at the end of the seminar for a Q&A session, uh, but you're also welcome um, to go ahead and uh, go ahead and post your questions in our chat room function. Uh, so for those of you who are new to Zoom, if you either scroll at the top of your laptop or computer, or the bottom, you will see the chat function. So with that being said, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started so that way we can share some wonderful information with all of you today. Uh, we did get a question about sharing the link to the website where it is gonna be posted. Um, and we will definitely share that towards the end of the presentation with all of you. Perfect, Ms. Christina just shared the link with all of you. So let's go ahead and begin. So recently, our president, President Joseph R. Biden Jr., um, declared Women's History Month. And he said, every March, Women's History Month provides an opportunity to honor the generations of trailblazing women and girls who have built our nation, shaped our progress, and strengthened our character as a people. So with that being said, we're very honored today to have our guests um, who are prominent leaders, leaders here in New Mexico share all of their wisdom um, of how they've trailblazed throughout their career um, and how they you know, wanna give back to uh, employees in general, women in general, um, some advice for you all uh, so that way you can have a successful career in the public se sector as well. So we're gonna go ahead and introduce uh, our, our wonderful women with us today. Uh, Natalie Cordova, uh, she proudly serves New Mexico Mexicans at the Office of the State Auditor as its Deputy State Auditor and has previously served in various positions prior in the Audit Division. She is a proud Aggie and received her Bachelor of Science degrees in Accounting and Economics from New Mexico State University and was awarded the Outstanding Senior of the Year Award in the Major of Economics. In 2012, Natalie earned her license as a Certified Public Accountant. In 2019, she was the recipient of the Financial Manager of the Year an outstanding member in government by the Association of Government Accountants and the New Mexico Society of CPAs, respectively. Natalie previously served as Chief Financial Officer for the New Mexico Attorney General and the Public Employees Retirement Association. Natalie also served as an elected board member for the Public Employees Retirement Association as a state member. Natalie and her husband have three children and live in the beautiful mountains in Northern New Mexico. Our next guest today as well is Jennifer Manzanares. Jennifer Jen is a native Northern New Mexican. Born and raised in the Poaque Valley, she graduated from Poaque High School and furthered her education at Northern New Mexico Community College, where she received her associates in criminal justice. She continued her educational journey at the College of Santa Fe, where she received her bachelor's degree in political science and secondary education. Jen began her term as Santa Fe County Treasurer in 2021 and is in her first term. She was Chief Deputy Treasurer prior to serving in her current position. Though she has had many roles in her career, she enjoyed the opportunity to serve as a senior field representative for Congressman, now Senator, Ben Ray Lujan. 
Her love for her native community allowed her to serve the constituents of Congressional District 3. Jen served, as her, commu served her community as the opioid policy coordinator in partnership with the Santa Fe Prevention Alliance. She is proud to serve as a team member of the Anna Age A Institute Santa Fe team and previously Rio Arriba County. Jen served on the MANA National Board of Directors Vice Chair, assuming her position in January of 2015. She has also served on several boards that include MANA del Norte, Envision Your Future, Juvenile Community Corrections, Law Enforcement Assister, Div Assister Diversion, also known as LEAD, and numerous organizations and nonprofits. Her dedication to serving others comes from her personal experience with family addiction and recovery. Her passion is to serve constituents, both internal and external to Santa Fe County, and that comes from many years of experience in public service. Jen is also the proud mother of three adult children, and the joy and light of her life are her beautiful grandchildren, Abby Grace, Xander, and Ozzy, and the newest addition, Abrielle. Jen enjoys making beautiful memories with her family, celebrating her deep culture, teaching her grandchildren traditions, and enjoying her love of travel and adventure. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to my colleague, Christina Gothier, to do the introductions for our other two guests today. You don't okay. hear. Oh, oh perfect. Go. All right. Thank you, Miss Christina. Uh, we are joined today by the lovely Miss Anita Griego. She started working for state government at the Department of Game and Fish in 1968 while attending college. In 1972, after graduating from Eastern New Mexico University, Anita started working at the State Planning Department, where she worked on health-related issues coordinating with the New Mexico Health Department. From 1973 to 1976, Anita was the personnel director for the State Planning Department, handling all personnel transactions. In 1977, Anita started working for the State Planning Department as an administrative assistant to the director coordinating special projects. In 1979, Anita was then appointed by then Governor Bruce King as the State Planning Director. The department was responsible for administering planning projects within the state of New Mexico. The department was, res oops, pardon me, programs were developed utilizing funds from various federal agencies, the Housing and Urban Development, Economic Development Administration, Four Corners Regional Commission, the Border Development Commission, and the State Historic Preservation. Anita worked with federal and state agencies as well as the Government of Mexico where she served in this position in 19, until 1982. From 1983 to 1987, Anita was the Director of the Energy Conservation Division of the Energy and Minerals Department responsible for administering federal grants to communities around the state for energy conservation projects. From 1988 to 1996, Anita worked at the Department of Finance and Administration, local government division, responsible for administering the Community Development Block Grant Program. In 1993, Anita was elected to the Para Board of Trustees, where she served in this position until her retirement from state government in 1996. After retirement, Anita went to work for the New Mexico Municipal League, where she worked with all municipalities within the state on issues relating to municipal elections, procurement questions, and any other pertinent issues affecting local governments. Each year during the legislative session, Anita analyzed legislative bills which would impact municipalities around the state. Anita also worked for the New Mexico Airport Managers Association and the Municipal Fire Chiefs Association. Thank you, Ms. Anita, for joining us today. And then certainly, Last but not least, Anna Williams, who is um, officially um, the Deputy Director for PERA. Anna has been with PERA for or five years, where she served the last five years as our Chief Financial Officer, and as I mentioned a moment ago, is our newly named Deputy Director. Prior to her current roles at PERA, she worked at the State Office of the State Auditor as the Financial Audit Director and as an audit manager. 
She was with the Office of the State Auditor for five years. Anna has also worked in the private sector in various accounting roles in, in the hospital industry and hospitality industry. Anna has a bachelor's in accounting and a master's in business administration and is a licensed CPA in the state of New Mexico. And so I believe we have some really great questions to pick the brains of these innovative women um, to hopefully help everyone in this space learn how to have successful careers just like they did. So Ms. Christina, the floor is yours. Perfect. So we're going to kind of uh, go round robin. Um, you know, unfortunately, because of COVID, uh, we're having to do everything virtual like everyone else. Um, normally, we would have had a wonderful in-person kind of panel uh, for everybody to kind of uh, feel a little bit more personal with these wonderful women. Um, so with that being said, we're going to have fun today with these questions. Again, like Christina said, we definitely want to pick the brains of our guests today uh, to see how they became successful in the public se sector here in New Mexico. So our first question, and we're going to go ahead and start with Miss Natalie. Natalie, how did your path lead you to start your career in public service? Thank you, Christina, and, and thank you for inviting me to speak today and be amongst these other fellow amazing women. So my path started um, because I was looking to optimize my work and personal family time. I previously began my career with a public accounting firm and it was an incredible experience. I really enjoyed it, but I certainly found a better fit in state government at the state auditor's office given I was expecting my first child. I was fortunate to be able to continue my career in audit. You know, at the time, um, Quite a while ago, I didn't realize then that there was the ability to have an audit career in state government. So I was really fortunate that I could continue working in that field, which I really enjoy. Um, every day is different and a challenge as, as an auditor. I know Anna knows that really well. Um, for me, it doesn't get boring. I really enjoy it. Um, I spent the first seven years of my state career with the state auditor's office um, and worked on a variety of projects. It was really fun. Um, and now as the deputy, I've collectively had over 10 years in this office in the two different roles. Um, in my reflection, state government has been a very successful and rewarding path for me. Awesome, thank you so much, Natalie. And like we mentioned earlier, Natalie, uh, we used to have Natalie here at Para and they stole her from us, uh, but we're still very lucky that she, uh, you know, collaborates with Para on different things throughout the year. So thank you so much, Natalie. So to our next guest, Ms. Jennifer Manzanares, uh, what led you to your career in the public sector? Let's see, Ms. Jen, I believe you're still on mute. So if you wanna go ahead and unmute yourself. We still can't hear you. We'll give, we'll give Jen a couple of minutes to see what's going on and then we'll come back to you. We'll circle back, Jen. I know that we were, she was having some issues today. So we'll, if, we'll see if you need to call back in, try, let's see. Go ahead and try again. Okay, we'll come circle back to you because we still can't hear you. We'll go ahead, Miss Anita. So Miss Anita, you have an extensive career um, based off of your bio when you sent it, it was very impressive. Uh, what led you to your career in the public sector? And I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, Anita, because I know you were having issues. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute you now. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you for asking me to be here today. It's really a, a joy. I haven't been involved in state government for so long, but I believe that uh, when I was going to college, uh, I started working um, at the uh, Game and Fish Department, as I said, and I... Um, I enjoyed working in state government. And I had actually majored in college in business education, but finding a, a teaching position never panned out for me. So I started working with government and I moved up in different positions and I figured it was a good career to stick with. And that's basically how I ended up in state government. <laughs> 
and I, um, I retired 25 years ago and worked for 25 years. So I, uh, I've been out of government for a long time, but I have a lot of friends that still work for government. So we talk all the time. So. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, uh, especially for being with us. I think you're our idol today because all of us are get are at, on that retirement track and uh, looking forward to retirement. So thank you, Anita. Sure. So I think Jen is still figuring out her audio. So we'll go ahead and go to you, Miss Anna, and we'll circle back to Jen. So uh, like Christina mentioned, Anna is our newly named deputy director, uh, but she's been with Para uh, for about five years. And so Miss Anna, what led you onto this track of being in the public sector? Oh, good morning, or I guess it's afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, so I think, um, what led me to a path in state government is I wanted a career that had a better retirement. So I started applying for jobs in the state government. So it's great that I now work for the retirement fund because that was what kind of led me to um, this path. Um, my first job was um, at the office of the state auditor, um, which I actually shared an office with Miss Natalie when I first started. There was three of us in a small little office. So we've come a long way. Uh, me and her. So it's it's great to see us grow, both grow in our careers. Awesome. Thank you, Miss Anna. So we're going to go ahead and try circling back to Jen. So Miss Jen, let's see if we can get you on audio. What led you into the public sector? Can you hear me this time? Perfect. Great. Okay, good. I had to switch devices. Okay, uh, what led me to my career? Goodness, it's been a, a lot of years since I've, um, I've been doing public service. I started, believe it or not, I spent 21 years of my career at the uh, laboratory in Los Alamos until I got a degree in political science and I looked in the mirror one day and said, what are you gonna do with that in Los Alamos? So I knew I, I was going to do something different which totally became my niche and um, went to work for then Senator Udall on his campaign. And no sooner did I uh, finish the campaign with him and was invited to apply for a position with Congressman Lujan. And from that moment on, I knew it was a, a leap of faith after having been in Los Alamos for so many years, but never looking back, uh, working for the federal government has been a very uh, intense experience, a lot of learning from uh, my mentor, my friend, uh, Senator Ben Ray Lujan, and uh, further into my future, I, I, I mentioned in the bio that there was a lot of lived experience, unfortunately, with uh, family members who struggle with substance use. So I learned a lot about the world of substance use, the misuse, the recovery, and I still very much stay involved with that. But running for county treasurer has been a real experience as a Latina woman. And so uh, never looking back, it's been great. Well, awesome. And congratulations, too. I know you're uh, in your first term still as our county treasurer. So thank you so much, Jen. Thank you, Ms. Christina. All right, we'll get to our second question. So Natalie, we'll go ahead and circle back again to you. Uh, so what is something you wish someone had told you early on in your career journey? That's a really great question, and I appreciate it. Um, especially given the, the awareness of, of women in the workforce that we're experiencing. Um, so I'll kind of put a spin on my answer initially. Um, what I wanna convey first and foremost are some of the things I did hear in my career that really meant a lot to me and helped me um, believe in who I was and know that I was valued on my team. Um, some of those important things were that my work mattered and that I was valued. Um, another great thing I heard from, um, ironically, it was a person in power. That individual told me never stop holding those in power accountable. Um, so really appreciated that. And then just the very few but important words of thank you for your help. So those are the, some of the things that I did hear um, and I was glad that I was able to hear. Now, in terms of something I wish someone had told me early on in my career um, and really meant it and worked towards it is this, your value and your worth don't decrease as an employee when you become a mother. I believe our society's really come a long way in being supportive in this effort, but I didn't 
I certainly didn't feel that initially early on in my career. And when I looked around at these great professionals um, around me, it just wasn't something you saw was mothers at high levels and high positions. Um, so that's one thing I wish I heard because people meant it early on. Um, my personal experience is that being a mother has made me a better and more understanding professional and transferable skills really are not limited to work settings only. Thank you, Christina. That's wonderful advice too, Natalie. And I think all of us who um, are on to, or not all of us, uh, but for those of you on the call as our, our guest today, um, I believe all of you are mothers. And so um, it's very admirable for someone like myself who's early in my career to see uh, women in these leadership positions and you still have a family to balance at home. Um, and I think it's definitely uh, something to say that, yeah, it does, you know, I, I'm sure it does make you, and I can say that now because I have three kiddos of my own, but it definitely uh, makes you more patient um, as, a, as an employee uh, in the workforce. And so wonderful advice. Thank you so much. Um, our next guest, Ms. Jen, what, um, what advice do you wish someone would have told you early on in your career? Okay, thank you for the question, Ms. Christina. Well, if I think back to my early career, I think uh, advice I would have appreciated hearing would be uh, to, to remember to take uh, self-care not as a not lightly, not just doing your nails occasionally, but um, really paying attention to the holistic picture, your health, your um, your boundaries, for example. I wish someone would have said a healthy set of boundaries will take you far in life. Uh, be sure to communicate clearly with people and clarify that that's, you're being understood and that you seek to understand somebody and not always to be understood, to be a good listener. And so... Uh, I did get that advice, actually, when I think about it from Senator Lujan, when we would travel a lot in the district, and and he would say that often. It's really important, Montanadas, he'd say, to to be a good listener and to to see what the need of the person is. And and I think some of the advice I got along the way was keep it humble and kind, and that's always been something I always want to uh, teach my grandkids is, and, and those that I um, mentor in my past to always remember that that we go home to our families at the end of the day. And, and so it's good to leave that stress, that frustration at, at work and uh, not so much at work, but in a space that, that can be dealt with later, but definitely lots of self-care and lots of um, being kind to yourself. And our former mayor who we just lost recently had a beautiful hashtag just last fall. And uh, I believe it said, be great, be, give yourself grace. That's what it was. And I think that's such wisdom because as women, we are determined, we're strong, we're, uh, as the word is, uh, you heard it on the floor of the uh, Senate or the House the other day, to be a chingona is a lot of work, but it's also very rewarding. So I can appreciate uh, everyone on this call and being a mother, you're absolutely right. That's a double time for most of us. Definitely want to echo that, Jen. I think especially now with this pandemic, um, you know, all of us at home, it was, it took a lot on everyone mentally and physically. And so, you know, I, I say that to everyone this year, um, take Jen's advice and definitely uh, take care of yourself, um, especially, you know, working from home. It's hard to cut yourself off uh, when you're working from home because you just, you're in that element and you forget to eat lunch or you forget to take your lunch break. Um, so we definitely want to encourage that to everyone. Thank you, Jen. Miss Anita. So as our retiree speaking today, what is something um, that you wish someone would have been able to tell you um, early on in your, in your career? Well, actually, um, since I go back way back to 1979, when I was appointed a state planning director, I was only 29 years old and there weren't very many women in high positions. And I was very reluctant to even accept the position because I had so many elderly men working for me and they actually didn't want to accept the fact that I was going to be in charge. And I had a lot of problems with that. I wish somebody would have just said, you know, be strong, you can do it. And I, I think I just uh, convinced myself that I could do it. 
But um, the one of the things that's interesting is when I first started state government, uh, I started in May. And of course, in September, I became pregnant with my first with my one and only child. And I actually kept it a secret for three months or four months because I was trying to be promoted to a planner position. And I knew that if they knew I was pregnant, they wouldn't promote me. Back then, it was very, very, you know, um, difficult to get up in government. And so uh, I felt really bad about that, but I figured I need the job so that I could stay, you know, in government. And um, when I did tell them, it, it was accepted all right, but I think there was still the stigma thing, you know, you're going to be a mom, you can't be a director, you know, any of this stuff. So I wish somebody would have told me that uh, it's hard to be a woman in, uh, a young woman in a man's supervisory world. And um, they're, they're not going to take you seriously, but uh, I guess I ventured on and uh, it didn't bother me once I got into the position. I, I was... Uh, I just, I learned from experience basically, so. Great advice, Ms. Anita. I think too, um, it is hard as women um, who wanna take on these supervisory positions, you know, and it's, I wanna say it has gotten better, um, you know, in the world we live in now where if you're pregnant, if, you know, you're still going to get hired and, um, and be able to take on a leadership position that maybe, you know, otherwise a man would have taken over. Um, so I definitely want to say that things have changed. Um, and I love that you just kept trucking on regardless of it. And you got into that position and you just flew forward. So very good advice. Thank you. Miss Anna. What is something that you wish uh, someone would have told you early on in your career? We've had some great comments from everybody. So I get to be last, so I'll have to um, hopefully end with a good note. Um, I think something I wish somebody would have told me early on in my career is just take everything um, in stride, not to stress over the little things. I remember in my younger career, just stressing over just little things and bringing it home at night, stressed about, if things are going to get done or, you know, and I just wish I would have known that things will get done and not to stress and bring that stuff home because it is hard when you are a parent and you bring your work home and it, it affects your family. Definitely great advice, Anna. Um, like I said earlier too, with the pandemic, I think um, that's been hard as well in that we're at home. So we basically move our work stuff from our desk to the kitchen table. And uh, we often vent to our family, uh, our family members. And um, it is admirable though, you're, you're you know, setting a, a wonderful example for your daughters um, in that, you know, it's, it's important, again, going back to self-care to separate, uh, you know, work from home. So wonderful advice. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Christina to go ahead and take us through our other set of questions. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Christina. All right, Ms. Natalie, you're up first. What do you consider to be one of your greatest accomplishments thus far? Hands down, passing the CK exam. That was, you know, in reflection, that was such a tough commitment. Um, and it took me a while to even get to the point where I felt like it was something I just needed to take care of. Um, so that's, I think, one of the greatest accomplishments. It, it was a true commitment, time and effort, um, really a commitment of my family at the time as well. Um, and I was, you know, it was rewarding to finally pass, um, have that designation. And it's a good reminder of my obligation to the, to the public and those I serve on a daily basis. Absolutely. In all of my years of college education, um, I had a um, accounting professor share like one of her preparation guides for her CPA. And so hands down, you and Anna deserve, you know, <laughs> all the honor and praise because that is a doozy of a test. So congratulations to you both. I definitely would say that's one great accomplishment. All right, um, let's see. Miss Jennifer, you're up next. Same question. What do you consider to be one of your greatest accomplishments? 
Oh, goodness. It's such a great question. I think when you look back at your career and um, the path that you took, there's so many moments that I would call them that, that are great accomplishments. And I would have to say that for me on um, primary night, when the results came in from the, um, through the media that I knew I had won as county treasurer, from the moment I put my name on the ballot on a Tuesday to the pandemic hitting on a Wednesday, there went my campaign plan out the door, not happening the way I had hoped. So here I am um, having to redo everything I had thought, uh, all the challenges that COVID brought in addition to being a Latina who wanted to be elected. So I have to really say that it was just that surreal moment of they finalized the numbers, there is no recount, and uh, wow, just an amazing moment. And, uh, you know, I was, I was share things with my about my personal uh, life and greatest moments have been um, also along my career path being able to bring my children alongside because sometimes you don't think they're listening and so even with your 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 little ones I look at Christina and I just wanted to acknowledge there was some amazing uh, leaders in on the on the um, on the zoom like Miss Felicia Lujan, Tammy Sue Suveranis and uh, the beautiful Miranda Mascarenas, and I saw that Nicole Medina was on. So, you know, I know we share a commonality, and that's that we work really hard, whether it's our education, it's our, uh, just seems like it's, with, there's more that we have to put in. And so that moment of, of being uh, selected to serve my community as a county treasurer was, uh, was probably the, the, the drop the mic moment. Absolutely. The sky's the limit at this point. So you know you've done it once and there are other opportunities to grow in your elected official capacity and continue serving people of not only your county but in New Mexico. And I think you had some really great mentors early on that have helped you see that, you know, it's it's really important to give back in all the ways that we can and most definitely um, all of us in this space, bringing along our littles and proving that there is no glass ceiling, that we've all shattered through it together is super important. So we very much appreciate that. Um, okay, uh, Miss Anita, same question for you. What do you consider to be one of your greatest accomplishments? Well, I think uh, it's like the others said. First of all, I want to say I, I congratulate Jennifer. I uh, admire you for persistence because I always wanted to run for office and I never had the, the nerve to do it. It was just too involved. I was involved in a lot of campaigns, but officially running, I wasn't. So I congratulate you. And uh, it was a great story what you said. But I think probably in all the government positions I had, one of the greatest one was when we were developing the uh, border commission back in the planning office, we were able to work with the four border states and Mexico and uh, we had a lot of money that we could provide between the two. We had a lot of projects that we were working on. And then I got to go to Mexico City and meet with the president to uh, discuss our joint efforts. So that in itself, I think, is something that I was real proud of. And then we continued that effort until I think like 75 or something or uh, up in the 80s, I think, maybe too. But um, on a personal note, I think one of my greatest accomplishments is raising a son who has become a great husband and a great father, not to mention how far he's come in his, uh, in his own career. But I was only able to have one child and I think I put all of my love into him and he's basically my, my joy and that's my personal accomplishment. And I have no doubt that he feels that love and so do all the folks who live in New Mexico and neighboring states. It is truly remarkable that even way back when, um, you and your position and the government in New Mexico remember that we are bigger than just our little slice of the world, that we have to you know, embrace our neighbors and work together. So that is, that is really, really, Remarkable. I, I love that story. So, all right. So I believe, Miss Anna, you are up next. Same question one more time. What do you consider to be one of your greatest accomplishments thus far? 
So I will definitely echo Natalie and it is getting my CPA license. Um, my kids used to call me the study monster because they were about 10, 11, 12 and a little young one at home. So they and my husband for helping us out, me out. So definitely one of my biggest accomplishments. Um, another one is just, you know, the two older kids are out of the house and on their own and off the parents' payroll. So that's been a great accomplishment, seeing them move on and succeed in their life. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, raising responsible, contributing to the earth human beings, we should all be applauded, um, hands down. Super, super great accomplishment, knowing that we're leaving the world a better place through the eyes of our children. So definitely um, something to be celebrated there. I still have a ways to go. Miss Christina still has a ways to go. So <laughs> we're holding out hope for that, you know, fly away from the nest day, hopefully. Um, all right, I believe the next question up, uh, we'll start with uh, Miss Natalie. Um, are there lessons and in institutional knowledge you feel is important to pass along to others? Thank you, Christina. I certainly do. I mean, I've just learned so many valuable lessons in my various positions as um, in the shoes of a subordinate and as, also as a leader. One of the most important things I, I think in terms of a takeaway is knowing your worth and always standing up for and supporting yourself and doing this for others that maybe don't feel they can do the same. Um, again, regardless of your position, whether you're lower level or in a leadership position, those are some key lessons, um, you know, key takeaways I will always have and continue to work on. Um, just making that commitment to respect everyone that we interact with and reinforcing its importance to others that you're around um, and just being open to the, the different generations in the workplace and embracing the fact that we have a lot of really positive aspects to learn from each other. Um, and then some more, you know, kind of in the weeds, things I've learned, time management optimization, my goodness, you know, it's, I'm sure everyone that's participating in this um, seminar can understand I think we often have more duties than we have time for. Um, so I really learned to optimize and focus on, um, you know, meeting deadlines in more efficient ways. And so um, one of the biggest takeaways, um, being able to adapt and the ability to learn different things. Um, and at a personal level, really listening to people and keying into some of the more subtle nonverbal responses to really learn employees and other, you know, true stakeholders better um, listening. And I think Miss Manzanata said this, I thought of the same exact um, country song, I guess, with being humble and kind, um, but it's such an important takeaway for us as humans and respecting each other, being humble and kind as a leader, admitting we're fallible, um, looking up to those you need, you know, we need to be able to see leaders that aren't perfect, admit their faults and take ownership and accountability. Um, and just being able to set the right example. Absolutely beautiful takeaways. I think all of those are um, really admirable as I was trying to scribble notes without looking at the paper. Uh, I'll, I'll do the video playback later. Um, I, I think the ability to learn is why we are all here on earth. The moment we stop learning, maybe our time is up and our number gets called at the big MVD in the sky. So I'm a firm believer in that particular, um, that particular thought process. So yes, definitely great takeaways. Absolutely appreciate those. Um, all right, Miss Jennifer, your turn. Are there lessons in institutional knowledge you feel that is important to pass on to others? Thank you, Ms. Christina. Ms. Natalie, thank you for, for when you said uh, getting in the weeds with time management, it couldn't be more true that finding a balance in everything is so important. And I know that that would be something I would want to say to my fellow, uh, my sisterhood, my, my atumanas, that um, when you look at your day and you look at those hours and how they go so quickly in so many ways, um, 
Anita had said that her greatest accomplishment was was her her son, and I really admire that because I look at my grandchildren now and I think, what am I going to say today that will build them and encourage them, and still fill my cups that I have so much more to give? And and really that time management, that that balance that you find in your day, and be kind to yourself. And I guess I'm in a kindness uh, state of mind because I think a lot about that when I think about public service and. And how you have to be graceful in situations a lot of times when someone's upset and you're not feeling so well yourself, but you have to show up for your staff and for your community and that in everything, um, know that it's okay not to be okay. I, I share that a lot of times that this too shall pass and, and truly it does. It feels like it's going to stay forever and it really doesn't. So uh, I really appreciated what, what Natalie said and uh, and I've really enjoyed the panel today. Thank you. Absolutely. I think that it couldn't be truer. It, um, I heard someone once say that balance was a bad word um, because we have to decide what's right for us in terms of priorities, and that might not be somebody else's priorities. So um, I think personal balance for our respective um, priorities is super important and that we all need to, you know, kind of lay those out and and own those priorities and rock them in, in all areas of life. So definitely great advice. Um, all right, Ms. Anita, you are up. Are there lessons in institutional knowledge you feel um, is important to pass on to others given your illustrious 50 years of retirement? Because um, you were very busy post-retirement after 25 years of service. Well, thank you for that. Um, balancing is something that's very difficult, even way back when. Uh, I think giving yourself, giving 100% of yourself to your job and to your family is really, really difficult. And I know it's always been a woman's thing that you're the one that has to take care of everything at home and you have to take care of things at work. But I think if never compromise yourself and try to make decisions that you can live with, I think that's the, the thing I would pass on to everyone um, I personally have always been organized and meticulous about everything I do, and I've been called down on it a lot. You know, you're, you're just too hard on yourself, and that's the way I've always been. That's the way I was raised, and um, I, I would suggest to never give up learning in order to increase your knowledge within your profession. We didn't have a lot of opportunities, you know, to, to do that when I was working, but uh, if you have a uh, chance to take advantage of it, that's what I would really, really uh, uh, suggest or advise so that words to live by um, I think the state has changed quite a bit and probably most um, of municipalities cities counties um, and other special districts have changed for the better um, many of them offer educational incentives and offer to um, help you know employees pay for higher education goals mm. so it is definitely changed for the better and more people should take advantage of those opportunities um, because Anita wouldn't steer you wrong. All right, Miss Anna, you are up. Are there lessons or, and institutional knowledge you feel important it, to pass on to others? Thank you. Uh, I love, Anita, what you just said, making decisions that you can live with. That is an awesome saying, a great, great motto to live by. Um, when, I guess some things I would think of passing on is listening to individuals, um, asking for help or advice. You know, we all don't have all the answers and, and, and not to be afraid to ask for help or um, reach out to somebody. You know, sometimes talking through an item helps you or an employee figure out a be the best solution because we don't have the answers, all the answers. Um, I try to just lead by example, set a good example for myself, so hopefully that people will follow. Um, in, in that role and knowing that everyone has different strengths um, and there's always something to learn. I think that is wonderful advice. Um, I Yesterday was my 17th um, year anniversary with PERA and oftentimes people say, you know, why do you keep coming back here? Why don't you move on? Why don't you do something different? And it's because I learn something new every day. <laughs> and so I keep coming back. When that changes, then I will consider, you know, other opportunities. But so far, so good. And 
um, all of the women in this space have, you know, set the bar very high, and we appreciate all of your guidance. Um, all right, so I believe that um, Ms. Christina is going to pick up now. And I just have to, to definitely point this out as well. Um, Christina is one of, has been one of my mentors as I've been here uh, with Para for four years. Um, and like she mentioned, she's been here for 17 years with Para. And, you know, it's very rare in the public sector when you see someone who has stayed with an agency even for longer than um, a lot of the times, even five years. Um, you know, so it's very admirable uh, to have her on um, today and co-host with me because she um, helps a lot of our uh, colleagues here at Para, um, especially with institutional knowledge. So she is my go-to person all the time. So I definitely uh, wanted to, to give her major kudos. Um, and like uh, Jen had mentioned, there are some other amazing women on um, the seminar today, even um, men on the seminar who are advocates, um, including our executive director, Greg Trujillo. Um, he is our fellow Norteño uh, from Taos. Um, and I just have to say on behalf, and I'm sure Anna and Christina um, and everyone who works for Para will agree, he's just such a champion for us at Para. So I definitely wanted to, to give him kudos as I know he's on the call. Um, we're gonna dive into our last question um, and then we're gonna open it up for Q and A. Um, but this is a fun one. So what is something you are passionate about outside of your public service career? And we're gonna circle back to you, Ms. Natalie. Thank you. Well, first and foremost, I'm of course passionate about my family. Um, some of my dear friends, our pets, being outdoors. I love being outdoors and being active. Um, forests, national parks, I love gardening. Um, playing sports with my kiddos, um, really, really enjoy cooking and baking. Um, and then, you know, I'm trying to think, what, is, what do I do with all my free time? A lot of it is spent cleaning and I do not enjoy that at all, um, but I, sh I should spend a lot of time doing that. And very last, many of you that know me know I'm a very passionate Raider fan. I'm having trouble calling them the Las Vegas Raiders but I, I love the, the Raiders as a team. And um, as I've gotten older, I've learned to, you know, be a little less more appropriately passionate for my football team. Well, the good thing about that, Natalie, is there's a new stadium that you get to benefit um, from, and it's just on the plane, maybe about a 40 minute little drive. So uh, that's definitely a big plus for you. Um, and Natalie is so humble. She, I, during the pandemic, I did some self-care and I would go to the gym and get out of my house uh, from having having cabin fever and her and I went to the same gym and Natalie was always having personal records like I'd look up at the leaderboard and Natalie's name would be there. Um, so she's not giving herself uh, enough credit. She's an amazing athlete. Um, so I just had to had to point that out, Natalie. So are you. Yes. And if, if, if I may have. Oh. Yeah, I was definitely. Gonna explain the pictures. These are kind of cool. First one is me and my husband at, you know, the one one time in the century bowl game for the NMSU Aggies, who actually won. Such a fun experience. Um, but we had a great time there representing our team. Um, might be first and last time ever in our lifetime. And then the middle one, some dear friends I used to work with. Um, miss them, love them. We did the Duke City Marathon together. I was the worst team member um, and they tricked me into doing the short piece of the marathon. I didn't, you know, and afterwards told me, well, it's uphill. Um, so I muddled through that. I'm not on a level by any means. And the last one is my best friend in this world. That's at the Colorado Sand Dunes. So one of our great national parks, if you haven't been there, you'd absolutely love going. Awesome. Thank you, Natalie. I know she, Natalie is an Aggies fan. So, I mean, an Aggies alum. So for those of you on the call who are a fellow Aggie, uh, you're going to have to give her a shout out later. Alrighty, next um, is Ms. Jen Manzanares. So tell us something, Jen, that you are passionate about outside of your public service career. Um, I have had the honor and pleasure of seeing Jen outside of work. Um, and still, she's always in community. Um, the and the love for her community mode all the time. 
Um, and so, and everyone on this call can see that as well. She's the hugest heart. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you uh, tell us what your passions are, Ms. Jen. Thank you, Ms. Christina. Uh, uh, just for Natalie Raiders, so we got to see their stadium and it's the perfect segue to uh, what I'm going to share in that. I have such a, a passion for my community. You're right, Christina. I, I love to serve and uh, in various capacities. And, and I think about healthier communities in many ways. And uh, in this picture, I was hugging on a little girl that uh, has an amazing voice. She's the next uh, Jenny Rivera, I believe. When you hear her sing La Gran Señora, your heart is just amazed with um, her beautiful voice as her mama sings as well. I think being um, in the community as long as I have, when I walk downtown, even just for a walk to the cathedral, uh, some days I just think of the beauty that's everywhere. And from uh, the beautiful mountains in Chama to everything we do, I always try to include youth with me. And right now I have plenty of youth because as being a grandma of four, I'm never bored. And so I get to walk in the house and all I hear is, Nana, you're home. So, I go from my work uh, mode and attire straight to, to uh, serving my family. And I, and I do have a passion for, you know, I always think if my home is in order and I really strive to do that, to be kind. And, and I did share earlier that um, substance abuse uh, doesn't discriminate. And that's a conversation that I had when I worked um, with Senator Lujan that took me very far in my community service. And, I'll just share a quick uh, project that we're going to be doing because I'm so excited about healing our communities. And what does that really mean? It's not just, it's just not a, it's action. And so we'll be working on a healing garden, uh, not too far, far from the uh, Santuario in Chimayo. And I know it's a very special place to a lot of people. And it's, it's really to bring awareness, but also support to families that have lost a loved one for uh, substance abuse, overdose, maybe, um, uh, community, uh, I'm sorry, domestic violence or gun violence or suicide. And I think that's going to bring us together as a community to not live in that stigma, but to know that we're in this together. And so those are my passions. And I really look forward to that project and one of my most recent endeavors, because I see the, the community healing, uh, families heal and individuals heal. So I just find it very important as we process our lives and, and as women that we lock arms and that we're stronger together. Um, and another thing about Jen um, that she probably won't say, but she um, is definitely a true definition of women empowering women. Um, and I've had the pleasure of considering her one of my mentors as well. So thank you so much, Jen. Miss Anita, so we had to showcase your beautiful work. Um, and I'm going to go and let her talk about this. But as you can see from her wall behind her, she is uh, just surrounded by beautiful works of art from several Spanish market artists here in New Mexico. Um, so Miss Anita, uh, what is something that you are passionate about outside um, or even just being a retiree? What's something that you're passionate about? Well, first of all, I think I've been passionate about traveling. Um, I was young enough to travel a lot. We uh, went to Europe, Costa Rica, Mexico several times. Uh, I've also had to become a frequent flyer to Boston because that's where my son and family live. So I have to go see them and they've grown up. My grandson is now going to be 17 and my granddaughter's 14. So I have to keep myself um, well enough to be able to continue to travel so that I don't miss out on a lot of things of their lives. So it's really hard being apart from them and not being able to be involved in a daily daily experiences, but we're on the phone a lot. And like you say, when I go, I usually go for eight or nine days and I try to go like every three months. The pandemic was really horrible because I didn't see them for about a year and a half. So uh, I think traveling is probably the most passionate thing. Uh, second of all, as you noticed, um, well, I do oil paintings and I've had several art shows with oil paintings. But after I met my second husband, Michael, he was passionate about the Hispanic arts. And he encouraged me to take up culture embroidery. And as you can see on the, on the screen, um, he does tin work and I do the culture. So we have a St. Michael there with the tin and the culture. We, we do a lot of those projects. And then the others are just, uh, one is a, almost a bedspread that I made. 
And another one is a pillow. So I love doing the colcha embroidery. Uh, we're both involved in Spanish market every year. And um, again, I guess being able to retire at an early age uh, has given me the opportunity to take up all kinds of uh, regular, you know, hobbies or traveling or whatever. But um, we hope to participate in Spanish market this year. We haven't in the last two years because again, the pandemic, but um, I'm passionate about that. So um, I guess those are the two things that, uh, and I, like I say, I try to take care of myself so that I can live a longer life to be able to enjoy my kids as they grow up, so. Awesome, thank you, Anita. And um, I just have to say, it's, it's so admirable um, that you are continuing our traditions here in New Mexico. Some of these traditions have been passed on uh, probably for thousands, if not uh, hundreds to if not thousands of years. And so um, you have some comments in the chat room saying how beautiful your work is, Anita. So everyone has to go check her out uh, for Spanish market this year. Uh, keep an eye out for Miss Anita Griego. All righty, next to Miss Anna. Um, and so I have to give Anna big kudos too. She's a, a wonderful mentor here at Para uh, for a lot of us. Um, and a true example too of women empowering women. Uh, and she's a phenomenal runner. Um, I just have to say that about Anna. She, I always give her a hard time of uh, how she's not afraid of anything when she's out uh, running. And so, Miss Anna, what is something that you are passionate about outside of Para? Um, I'm passionate about doing family activities with my, you know, my family. We go camping, snowboarding, skiing, um, baking, and running are definitely things that I am passionate about um, outside of um, work. Um, it's kind of related to that. These pictures is the first picture is me handing off to my one of my oldest daughters. So we did the Tucson run around Tucson with a group of friends. So I got to hand off to her. So that was great. Um, the middle picture is me snowboarding and the little person behind me um, is my youngest daughter who was learning how to ski. Um, now when she goes down that same run, she's way ahead of me. I can't keep up with her. I have to tell her to slow down so she doesn't take anybody out. Um, and the next picture is me running. We, me and my daughter's kind of cut off, but that's my old, oldest running with me um, in the half marathon in Viacito, where I spent lots of my summers and it was their first annual um, half marathon. So we ran around Viacito Lake. Um, and it's kind of ironic, the, pic the building in the background is actually where I started working um, back in high school. So kind of a little bit of symbolic there. <laughs> awesome. That, well, that was a full circle, Anna, a literal full circle. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. So now uh, we have a couple of minutes uh, to go ahead and do um, a couple of questions uh, for our guests. Today. So. Um, if you have a question, please go ahead and feel free to unmute yourself. And if not, if you're shy, you can go ahead and put your question in the chat room function as well. Um, I want to read some comments. Uh, Miss Miranda Mascarenas, is another a uh, valiant uh, leader in state government um, says, no question, just a shout out to all of you amazing women on this panel, um, including Christina and Christina. So everyone is just Christina-fied today uh, with Christina and myself. Um, another comment, thank you for a great seminar. What an inspirational group of talented and strong women. Um, someone just say something? Not, not a question, Miss uh, Christina, but I must have a shout out for you for doing such a great job. And we know that you're going to be serving our beautiful city with as a reina. So que viva la reina. Que viva. So Jen's not going to say it either, but Jen uh, is my hermana reina. So she was a reina. Uh, what year was it, Jen, when you were a reina? I don't know. She. It it was in 1990, many months ago. So we're celebrating the 310th anniversary of Santa Fe Fiesta. So a long reigning um, group of women. I know that we have, Tammy, you have your hand up if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, thank you, Christina. I just want to say, I don't have a question, but I just want to say thank you to the wonderful women that, you know, um, 
presented today, it's very, very helpful, I think, for all of us with the answers that they had for um, those of us who are just recently starting or the, those of us that are at the tail end of our state career. So again, thank you for um, the great advice. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tammy, for being on with us. Christina, can you hear me? Yes. I just, I just wanted to say that um, I admire the, the other panelists and uh, you're all amazing women. And I wish you all the best of luck in your careers. And uh, you have time to stay active in your personal lives too. So just continue that. So thank you. Thank you, Anita. Does anybody else have anything to say or any questions? I also have to give a big shout out. I know we have some para staff um, on the call as well, uh, board members as well. Uh, we have Mr. Francis Page, uh, one of our board members and former board uh, acting board chair. Um, and uh, he too is such a champion of all of us at Para. Uh, we also have Kristen Varela, who is our chief investment officer. Um, and she has done some wonderful things for Para, um, including that we have an all time high in our Para trust fund of $18 billion. Um, if you look back in history, when we were first established in 1947, um, we had thousands, I mean, not even a, a lot of money in our trust fund. And um, it's very admirable to see Kristen and her team get us to where we are today. So a uh, big kudos to her. We have some other managers, Marlena, who is our one of our ASD extraordinaires, Deb V. Hill in our IT department. She makes sure that all of us are, are good to go within Para and we're equipped teleworking. Um, and we also have Karen Lujan, who is um, our Smart Save Deferred Compensation Manager. Um, and she is just a wonderful asset to Para as well and sits on our 75th anniversary committee. Uh, and we also have Felicia Lujan, um, who is part of our 75th committee as well. And she has been such an angel to our group and a wonderful strong leader um, with the State Archives um, and Record Center. And we're gonna have her highlight um, some of her archive work um, later this year. Um, as part of our seminar series. So we- Excuse me, Christina. Yes. I just wanted to say one thing. Um, the PRA is a fantastic organization and I was on the board way back when and we the money has just come in. And um, I think being retired for 25 years, it's probably one of the best retirements in the entire country. So uh, I congratulate everybody for keeping it as, as uh, vital as it is and uh, Hope that it continues for future generations. Yes, and, and it's a good point to touch on that too, um, Anita, is we are, are constantly always in the top five retirement plans in the country. And so um, that's something that we are very proud of. And it, it's we're very excited to hear that you feel the same as well. Um, let's see, next, I'm going to go ahead um, and move us forward. With that being said, um, our seminar series that we've been having this year is because we are celebrating our 75th anniversary. Um, and so we've come a long way. Uh, we started in 1947 um, and now we have um, over 47,000 active members um, and over 42,000 retirees and beneficiaries. And so uh, we definitely encourage you to celebrate with us this year and get onto our website, um, learn some more about Para, see some awesome pictures. Um, and join in the fun with us this year um, as we celebrate. Um, so before we wrap up, uh, I thought that this quote was, was good to share. Um, and it's a woman is the full circle. Within her is the power to create, nurture, and transform. Um, and this was by Diane Mary Child. And so uh, with that being said, if anybody has any closing comments, um, please feel free to share them. Um, and again, thank you so much to our wonderful guests that we had with us today. Um, keep just doing amazing work for New Mexico and for our communities um, and continue being uh, mentors and uh, taking the time. We appreciate you taking the time to mentor um, other uh, aspiring women leaders here in New Mexico. So on behalf of Para, thank you so much. Let's see, um, I'll go ahead and read some comments from our chat room. Um, amazing strong women, thank you for such an inspiring seminar. Go Aggies, so that's a shout out to you, Natalie. 
Uh, thank you for protecting our para benefits. Thank you, Heather, for being on with us and, and for saying that. It's really kind of you. Um, we will again be posting this video on our website. So we definitely encourage you to uh, get on to see the video if you want to go back and rewind or share with anybody else. I know we had another question, para question, when should I look into retirement? So we actually host a monthly retirement seminar um, and we can share that with you, Caroline. Uh, I'll have uh, Christina or myself here in a little send you our emails um, and we can share some information with you about how you can register for one of our seminars. Thank you, for Christina, for hosting this. I really enjoyed it. You're very welcome. And it sounds like we're, we're done for the day, ladies uh, and gentlemen. So uh, we will go ahead and let you go. And again, thank you so much for being on with us this afternoon. You all take care and stay healthy. And Caroline, you can actually stay on too if you um, if you want to talk a little bit about when you want to if if you have some questions about retirement. So you're more than welcome to stay on. Oh, fantastic! Thank you. To get off here, leave it. <laughs>